Welcome back to Switch to Linux. So it is Monday, it is time for another Linux Top 5. And uh, last week's video was the top 5 things I really liked about uh, Debian. Uh, today we are on the dark side, the top things that are bad about Debian. Now I actually have six here, although one or two of them probably only applies uh, desktop environment related. So we can uh, look at it from that perspective. So the first is, and this can be a good, can be a bad, uh, there's some argument one way or the other in the community. Like, unlike a lot of the other rolling release type distros, the Debian takes about as long as a glacier takes to melt to get up a new version. And so um, the, the good thing is they they push all of the security updates out pretty quick. I mean, it's, it's fairly common for me to see that I have security updates to install. Um, and so you get the security. You just don't always get the new packages. Hello, everybody. Use Debian. It rocks. All right. So we have the endorsement from the kitty for Debian. Um, so it does take a long time though, so if you are looking for some of the latest software, you know, like right now Debian 9 has the latest software in it, for sure, because it all came out. But give it a few weeks, maybe a few months, and uh, it might get to the point where you have to really start installing uh, updates to specific software on your own, which is a bad thing in that um, you have to move outside of the basic repositories to get that software. It's a good thing in the respect that if you have software that you know works and you know it's secure, there is no reason to, to not. For in one example I had is um, my OpenShot on Linux Mint just you know updated because system updates and the new version of OpenShot, it was three to four times harder to use and did the exact same thing and it was already like Windows Live Movie Maker which is an extremely limited video editing program and that's when I switched to Kden Live. It's like if I'm gonna do something complicated I'm actually gonna have to take the time to learn uh, you know learn a good software package and that's what I did that's precisely what I did. Um, so it does take a long time for software to update um, the second uh, issue that I encountered, and this has been been pretty uh, pretty regular, is that um, the uh, uh, volume issues. I'm just still having volume issues, and uh, basically, certain applications will mess with all of the volume settings. I have tried every fix, like, and I'm sure I'm going to get tons of comments down there. Oh, do this, do this. I've done every thing you could possibly find in every forum post about this issue. Nothing has resolved the volume issues. So for example, if I load up here, um, so take an, keep an eye on my volume up here in the corner, when I load up my, um, uh, where's it at, Cody is my chief application, it maxes out the volume before it plays Cody. All right, and on top of that, if I pause a video in Cody and come back to Cody again, it maxes the volume out again. And for a while, it was even maxing the volume out in between episodes. So if I'm playing like TV episodes or something on Cody, in between every single file change, it would max the volume, which is really annoying. And there's a lot of applications on here that still don't work. For example, um, I'm using Conqueror on, as one of the web browsers that I'm actually using. And with Conqueror, again, every single time, if I'm watching YouTube or something, every single time I switch to a new video, maxes the volume. And, you know, you don't always know when you're switching a video. You know, I play a video, I'm doing something over here on the other computer, and all of a sudden, boom, blaring noise. Uh, and it even happens when an ad plays. So I'll watch a long form video on YouTube, an ad shows up, and I had the volume just right, an ad shows up, and it maxes the volume between it. And so there's a lot of these applications. Now Chromium and, uh, and Firefox are not doing that any longer, um, but you know I am having a lot of volume issues on this system. And being as that this uh, PC is a media PC that I use specifically to do videos and, and music and things like that, can have it. So uh, this guy here, I'm probably gonna keep it around at least until I have something else that I wanna try for the long run. However, as much as I love the system and what it can do and how cool it is, 
it just isn't a, a good long-term viable solution. Mm -hmm. Now the next one is, um, it is more of a KDE thing. So we're gonna have kind of six items on this list because this one's specifically is a KDE issue. It does not seem to save any login preferences. So uh, for example, if I wanna change the wallpaper on my login screen, nope, can't do that. I've tried it and I know how to do it. That works perfectly fine on my Linux Mint KDE and all the other KDE computers I've used. You know, you go in, you set up a custom wallpaper, it doesn't take it. Um, there are several other settings for KDE that I have attempted to do and I just gave up. They, you can set them, they just don't save. So that's kind of an 80, uh, KDE issue. Um, another thing with Debian is the your AMD support is still very spotty. So this computer I'm running on has, uh, has an AMD processor and a GPU, so everything's all integrated. Um, and uh, I'm running it right now. It works fine as far as that perspective. Uh, because I've installed the uh, the non-free drivers, and so if you are really wanting to be on a uh, on a completely free open source platform, you probably don't want to use this if you're using AMD, uh, especially an AMD integrated GPU like this computer has. Now it works just fine if you don't mind, and you know I'm I'm okay with installing a non-free video driver. And the good news is now that I do have the non-free drivers installed, no matter which computer I use in this office for this particular build, it works out great. It just detects whatever the thing is and loads the proper driver at, at boot. So um, that is the downside though, is that the AMD support is spotty. You do have to install the proprietary drivers. Um, the next issue is I cannot get the camera to work on this. Um, and some of it like, like Mate here, I can actually go in and I can actually uh, increase the size of the camera, hopefully. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. Okay, never mind, it crashes. <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, the camera system won't work. Now, they're a, a part of that, not all of it, but part of that to out, you know, uh, address that, the question of all the people will be like, oh, you have a GPU. Yeah, it is a GPU. And for that reason, whoop, wrong button. For that reason, um, yeah, I don't expect it to work well. And on other distros that I know that the camera will work, like if I take the same exact setup, Linux Mint KD, camera works just fine. Um, and uh, it works just fine on Ubuntu. However, if I try and run the camera at full HD, it starts to lag out. That's caused by the GPU. Um, if I take the, the same system, put it on the other Beastie computer, it runs just fine. But if I take this computer and try and run it on the other system, it still does not run the camera. And when you're running, uh, when you're running KDE, when I'm not recording video, um, I'm sorry, when I'm running Mate, when I'm not recording video, I usually have been able to push this camera up to 1080p. Um, when I and then I can start recording video and it seems to work. Cinnamon will crash. Uh, anything over 600 by 800, Cinnamon crashes the camera. On KDE, uh, the camera will crash if you try and change from whatever the default is. However, it will mess with your login set or with the, your wallpaper settings and the whole right half of the screen gets cut off. And I think that that's having something to do with Wayland. Um, so the camera's just not working uh, on this system like it does on all of my other Linux systems. Um, and then the last thing I pulled out, and this is uh, this may or may not be a thing. This kitty's down here testing the my internal organs for weaknesses. Yes, yeah. All right. Um, so the last thing, and this may or may not be a big deal for you, um, but the um, the um, key lock does not. <laughs> does not uh, unlock on, on login. And uh, I've even changed the settings so it should, but it doesn't. So if I come in now, I have to end up entering my password numerous times, no matter what I'm trying to, to do on the computer. Say, hey, look at that, it wants, uh, wants a key ring unlocked. Um, and so, you know, that for me is a little bit, uh, a little bit annoying. You know, all of the other systems that I have, you know, it still does use the key ring, but the key ring unlocks when I log into the computer. And uh, that is uh, certainly one of the one of the downsides that I have on the system. So those are my bad points of Debian. Again, check out the video last week for the good points of Debian. Uh, there's a lot about the system I like. 
Um, if this were just a solid main production computer, I'm just doing file structures, whatever else on, yeah, it'd probably be a, a much better system. But because this is a media PC and I'm having the volume issues, I just can't use it as a very reliable media PC. So, you know, I'm going to be uh, probably going back to using the Linux Mint KDE because that works and it looks nice. So thanks for watching. Um, if you do like uh, what we're doing here at Switch to Linux, uh, you can check out switchtolinux.com forward slash uh, uh, support to figure out how you can uh, support us right now. As of now, we have a Patreon um, um, page up, so patreon.com forward slash Tom M. Um, also, uh, I am releasing a new book. This is from my Christian book series. Um, so I'll be releasing a new book here within a couple of weeks. Uh, probably a week or two. I'm waiting for the uh, all of the file structures were approved. All I'm waiting for right now is for the um, the print proofs, so I can make sure everything prints nicely. And as long as that looks good to me and I pass off on that, then once I get some books in here in the office, I'm going to open that up for uh, for orders, make it all public and stuff. Um, anybody on my Patreon list will definitely get a free ebook, and I am looking on at getting everybody, possibly getting everybody a uh, print book as well. It's going to depend on the shipping rates, and can I work out a deal with the publisher to uh, print and ship a book uh, internationally for the international folks. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.